Hello everybody, so check it out. Iraq just attacked US soldiers. In addition to this, Iraq just voted to kick the US out of the country. There's some sort of confusion about Soleimani and like what his role with everything is. There's also an attack on the United States' embassy. There's also a ton of misinformation going on right now, and that is what I'm here to break down for you guys right now. Real quick, hello, my name is Zach Moss. I study international conflict. My goal is to eventually get a PhD in this process. I attach all my sources in the description box below in case you wanted to call fake news on my happy self. Anyway, so the, the news about the missile strike right now is actually breaking at this very moment. Thought I'd throw that out there to show you how fresh this story really is. First things first, let's start off by talking about Iran attacking US troops. Now that happened today, which is January 7th, 2020. Again, literally right before we filmed this video. Now Iran claimed the attack, which is very interesting because normally when they attack a different country, they do it by way of proxies. So they'll like, for example, like fund or weaponize a militia like Hezbollah against Israel but very rare occasions will they actually target a different government. Now I checked multiple sources and yes, it is 100% confirmed that Iran claimed the attack. Now here's a statement by the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. And so this is what they said about the issue. Quote, the brave soldiers of IRGCs, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, aerospace unit have launched a successful attack with tens of ballistic missiles on Al-Assad military base in the name of martyr General Qasem, I think I said that right, Soleimani, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps said in a statement. Now, after the attack, naturally, the Department of Defense was asked about what they can say about the situation. Now, they can't immediately confirm whether there had been any casualties or not. Here's what they actually said, quote, We are working on initial battle damage assessments, said spokesman Jonathan Hoffman. As we evaluate the situation in our response, we will take all necessary measures to protect and defend U.S. personnel, partners, and allies in the region, Hoffman said. So as of right now, no credible source has actually reported on whether or not there's been casualties, nothing's been leaked so far. However, there was an Iraqi official that actually said that there were multiple Iraqi casualties. However, that also could not be confirmed. Now, real quick, let's shift gears and talk about the Iraqi parliamentary and their recent vote to kick the United States outside of their country. So the Military Times actually reported on this. The Military Times is the military's media outlet. So they reported on this saying, quote, lawmakers approved a resolution asking the Iraqi government to end the agreement under which Washington sent forces to Iraq more than four years ago to help in the fight against the Islamic State group. So look guys, what we can pull away from this is Iraqi government did vote democratically and said, look, we don't want you guys to be inside Iraq. We want you guys to leave which is very interesting. Now, in response to this, there was a leaked email, which essentially, just to give you guys like the little spark notes or the cliff notes version is, the United States said that they were planning on pulling out of Iraq. However, later, the Pentagon actually disputed this claim and said the US troops are not preparing to withdraw from Iraq and instead claimed the email was poorly written and was leaked and does not represent the intentions of the US military. If you guys wanna see the exact leak, you can check the description box below. I'm just giving you guys the summary just for your own, you know, sake of time. Now, if we were to pull out, that would be about 5,200 troops, according to the Military Times. Here's my guess. I bet we're waiting for the Iranian issue to boil over into the point where we're going into an all-out war, then we'll just jump the border and then just go right into Iran, look back at Iraq and say, hey, look at that, we gave you guys our country. You should thank us and you should be grateful of the fact that we left. So you should say, thank you, America, not death to America. That's my guess as to what the United States military is really planning right now. So now let's get into the U.S. Embassy in Soleimani and try to understand why exactly he had died. Now, according to Mustafa Salim, a Washington Post journalist, and Jane Arif at NPR, that they had said the Iraqi prime minister made a statement on the Soleimani situation. And the prime minister, Abdil Abdul Mahdi, showed up in Iraq on January 5th. Now, Donald Trump allegedly asked Soleimani if he could mitigate tensions between Iran and Saudi Arabia. So Soleimani and Iraq were the middleman. So pretty much what happened was Donald Trump had allegedly called up Soleimani and said, look, we need you to help kind of grease over the situation in Iran. We need you to help try to mitigate the tensions between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And so Soleimani went to Iraq and tried communicating this type of information to the Iraqi prime minister. Now in that process in Baghdad, Baghdad, Iraq, Soleimani was killed by a strike that was approved by Donald Trump. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know in the comment section below. There's not a whole lot of information outside of that. There's still a lot of like, you know, what's actually going on? What are the reasons the United States are stating? It's kind of like an Iraq situation before we invaded where it's like, 
why are we there? There's weapons of mass destruction. Wait, Osama bin Laden, Saddam Hussein, like, wait, what? Very similar situation. There's a lot of like confusion here, but that is according to the Iraqi prime minister. It was reported on by Mustafa Salim at the Washington Post and Jane Arif at NPR. Again, all my sources are in the description box below if you would like to check those out as well. So here's where it gets very interesting. I'm gonna give you guys the summary of what the US's excuse for killing Soleimani actually is. If you wanna know the exact quote, you can check the video in the description box below. I'm saving you guys about 10 minutes of your life right here, okay? So you should probably thank me or don't. Either way, I'm giving it to you, so you're welcome. Now, the argument by the US government was that Soleimani was getting ready to plan to plot an attack. What? <laughs> Wait, hold on, what? He's preparing to plan an attack. So this is like a, like a preemptive strike in the event that he was going to, he wasn't plotting an attack. He wasn't attacking. He was apparently preparing to plan an attack. What? That doesn't make a lot of sense. Does it make a lot of sense to you guys? I mean, if I'm wrong, let me know. Um, seriously, let me know. But that, that doesn't really sound right. In addition to this too, they also had a couple of other excuses as to why that they had killed Soleimani. And by the way, real quick, I'm not like completely defending Soleimani here. Now in this instance, yes, they shouldn't have killed him. According to the prime minister in Iraq, we had given Soleimani our word in good faith, like, hey, can you please help us out here? And then we killed him unjustly. I'm not saying that he was a perfect person because he's definitely not, especially if you're looking at the amount of casualties from the IEDs he created in Iraq when the US invaded. Granted, we shouldn't have invaded Iraq, but look, okay, focused on the soldiers here. Going all the way back here. The other reasons include his influence in the region. Well, yeah, his influence is literally why we asked for his help originally. And in addition to this, it was in response to a US contractor who was killed. Which, by the way, we also don't have a lot of information on why he was, who, who was he, what was he doing there, so on and so forth. We just heard a contractor was killed. It's like, okay, can we please get some more information? Because if we just killed a general as a result, which will start a war, we should get a little bit more information about the situation. We should agree that we should deserve to have more information on this, right? Something else that I wanted to touch on here is that, look guys, regardless on kind of like what side you're, you're on here, we should all agree that if you are killing a prominent official, no matter what side, who is doing something for you in good faith because you asked them to, and then you kill him, what kind of a sign does that give the international community? It tells them that, look, you can't trust the Americans in good faith because the last time that they asked you guys to do something, you guys being the international community, they killed you as a result. That's the huge problem here. How are you going to ask anybody for favors in the future when there's literally a backlash across the world because you literally just killed somebody and don't have a whole lot of concrete evidence as to why. Especially if, if this is really true. If this is really true, and we actually asked him to do something for us, and then we killed him as a result, that's bad. That's bad diplomacy. Now let's go into like what was going on with the embassy. So five days before Soleimani had arrived in Iraq, there was protests at the US embassy in Iraq, and it apparently was by Shia militiamen. And so what happened was they had stormed the embassy. Nobody was hurt. They launched a, f a fire essentially in like a central command room. It was kind of like a, if you imagine like a CNN kind of like central desk microphone, you know, thing kind of talking to everybody around the area. That's essentially what they were burning. And then they left. Nothing else happened as a result. The United States says that this was connected to Shia militia members that were backed by Iran. But this is very controversial considering the fact that there hasn't been to my, the best of my memory, and I would bet probably about $25 saying I'm right here, there hasn't been any Shia groups that have directly targeted the United States. They might have targeted like Israel, for example, but most of the targeting that's going on internationally, that's all by like Sunni Salafi, like groups, like ISIS, like Al Qaeda, not Shia groups. That's all the way over here. We're not, we're not even dealing with them. For the most part, in comparison, they're not even a threat. And so they didn't kill anybody. Granted, should they have been doing this? Well, of course not, right? Like, obviously they shouldn't have been doing that. But who's to blame here? Like, who's kind of the person, the puppet master in the back? That's very controversial is what I'm saying. And also, who's to blame here? Well, technically in diplomacy, it is up to the host government to provide the reinforcements. That's how it goes. That's literally the standard. The bad thing about this also is that sets a precedent in Iraq saying, look, push comes to shove, the Iraqi government will give in and let the people do what they will. 
And so now the governments that are trying to communicate to Iraq and create an embassy there, it's going to be very problematic for them. But anyway, guys, I hope this kind of alleviates some of the questions and kind of the misunderstanding about what's going on right now. Hopefully I provided at least some sort of a timeline to understand the situation better. Again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. I can create a follow-up video if you would like. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. If you'd like to reach out to me, my Twitter is ZachMoss6, Facebook, ZachMoss6, Instagram, The Zach of Zachs, where you can reach out in the comments section if you're on YouTube, if you're on TV. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Don't be scared.